to correct, course correct to. You know, you see you go, you know, when you're on a ship or something, you're constantly course correcting. There's no straight line on the ocean, right? So similarly in life, there's no straight line. So we have to constantly course correct, course correct. If we're not clear on what we're course correcting to, that's when all the shit happens. That's when all the imbalances are created. So could you state your calling? People experience, my calling is people experiencing interconnection. Try, try saying that and see how it feels. Mm -hmm. So even if it feels unnatural, just try it on for a couple of weeks. My calling is people experiencing what? Or realizing or being any kind of verb like that experientially. So people being or experiencing or knowing what? My calling is people knowing, experiencing one. The one? Uh, what, one oneness? Oneness, one. yeah. I'm, oneness. Cool. I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it back on the, on, the, on the, how do you call it? The, uh, the live stream and uh, I will find, I find out because now I'm... Uh, cool. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's no. totally fine. So you're, it's a work in progress. Um, well, let's just say it's connection for now. People experiencing abundant connection, right? Liberating connection, oneness. Um, how would you course correct your current patterns of thinking and feeling and behaving to people experiencing oneness or connection? What's, what's the root cause of that behavior that you want to change? What is the belief in your mind somewhere that is feeling like it's beneficial to do that, even though you feel that it's time for you to change that? Uh, then I'm, that I'm not whole. whole then I'm not there you go. Awesome. That you're not one? Yes. Nice. Wholeness is oneness, right? Because if it's whole, it includes everything, which makes everything one. Oneness, wholeness, right? Yes. People experiencing wholeness. Try that. Uh, people experiencing uh, wholeness. <laughs> cool. <laughs> good. Well, it feels good. feels better. So can you identify the thought or the belief? How would you verbalize the belief that causes that feeling? You already kind of said it, but I want you to verbalize it again. That that uh, I believe that I, I'm. The belief life. is that I'm in that moment, in that feeling, when I, when I get the habit of, of getting the atten uh, attention, mm -hmm. then the, the the feeling is that I'm not uh, whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not I'm not, not okay. I cool. need somebody to be and, whole. Sweet, and that feels bad, right? Yeah, it feels uh, bad. Yeah. Yeah, it feels bad. Why? Because it, it it's like a addiction. It, it, it's like. A I know. Actually, that's not why it feels bad. No. No. Why does it feel bad? To believe that you're not whole. Think in terms of alignment to higher self. So your emotions always show you if your perspective is in alignment. So just because it's a lie. Or? It's a lie. Did you say that? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It doesn't feel good because it's not true. It doesn't, it doesn't sync up with the frequency of truth. And that's the emotional guidance system. It lets you know when you're out of whack in your way of thinking and believing so that you have an opportunity to investigate, identify and course correct or replace or resolve. So we have a belief in your system that is out of alignment. It feels bad. And in order to feel better, instead of realigning it, what you have learned to do in the past is find circumstances that distract you from that or that make you feel the opposite, right? So that there's a temporary gratification, which if you remember on rock schedule is in the column of consuming, yeah. right? Right. So because, because you haven't effectively up to this point dealt with the out of alignment belief, automatically the way that we're conditioned is to look outward to blame and or get fulfillment. So you're right. consuming. And it doesn't feel good. And so you're at this point where you're sick of yourself, where you're positively repulsed by your own out of alignmentness, and you want to clear this up. That's great. That's amazing. So this is the ground from which you can heal. And so it can go very quickly if only you sort of like clearly see what's going on. So give me a second. Do you believe in creation or God? Yes. Do you believe that it is whole? It's whole. Nice. Do you believe that all of its expressions are intentional? Uh, what do you mean by intentional? Meaning that do you believe that there is something that ever happens or do you ever believe that someone is born or something is created that was 
not intentional or purposeful? Um, I don't know. Okay, cool. So let's take it one. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is the ultimate authority, the ultimate intelligence? Do you believe everything is intelligent? Yes, I believe that. Yeah. Beautiful. So then you must be too, right? Yes. And if there's only one, and that one is the supreme intelligence, and everything, everything that could ever possibly be is created out of that intelligence in harmony with that one wholeness overseeing everything. So from the parts perspective, it might seem like things are fragmented. But from the whole's perspective, there's an intelligence to everything. Would you agree? Agree. Sweet. So that includes you, no? Yes. Nice. So everything about you is intelligent. Yes. Even when you're being stupid. Yes. So stupidity is still an intelligent expression of the one infinite creator that somehow is expressing and exploring the wholeness of creation. So there's literally nothing about you that is not whole that is not integral to the whole of creation. Would you agree? Yes. Are you, are you the body? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Where, where does the belief come from that you're not good enough or not whole? Uh, it's a sort, but, but sort emotion pattern. Right. And it, it comes from taking on this body as if it's you, right? Like yes. people pointing fingers at you when you were younger and growing I up think and so, like yeah. calling you names or whatever it is, right? mistreating, you start to feel like you're the body. It's like awareness when we're ch childlike is vast and open and sure we're looking through these eyes but there's no words for identity. We're just like, oh. <laughs> and then, you know, we get a name and we start getting pointed to and when we have little cramps and we cry, someone responds and takes care of our body and the cramps go away. So we get reinforced through conditioning both physically, circumstantially and verbally and subliminally and psychologically and vibrationally and emotionally. <laughs> ancestrally and sociologically, <laughs> politically, ontologically. <laughs> In all these ways, we're being conditioned to collapse around the sense of being here, being this body. Correct? Correct. And then this body now feels like us. It's not, but now we associate with this. And so we go through life and more people, you know, we, we meet other dicks like yourself. <laughs> And they, <laughs> at least dicks are honest, right? You can hardly blame a dick for not being honest. There's poing, <laughs> there it is. Thank you. It's, it's hard to hide. It's just so honest, it's just in your face, right there. <laughs> it's just, the truth is naked, bare naked, right there. So then you meet other people and they reinforce a certain belief system that I'm, as soon as you feel partial, you no longer feel a whole. So it's beautiful that your calling is about wholeness or about connection or oneness or in that range. Because now you've taken on a fragmented identity which is so representative of humanity's theme, right? So literally what you've taken on in this life is a portion of the darkness that humanity is working with. It's working out, you know, as as a collective, our theme is to move from darkness into light right now, right around this time. So a lot of people that came into this world have deliberately taken on a portion of that collective, chose the perfect body, the perfect mind, the perfect birthplace, the perfect parents, the perfect initial life conditioning circumstances to take on a portion of that collective like belief, that insecurity so that they could bring light to it. And that's what you're doing now, because you're here in this retreat, you're sharing with honesty, you're tr making it transparent, which already increases the light that can reach those shadows. So actually you're standing up, not just for yourself, but you're standing up for millions of people around the world, first of all. 